every preacher loves a good illustration. Those stories, jokes, anecdotes, pictures that make the words we're speaking come alive in the minds of our hearers. Sometimes, however, what we think of as a brilliant illustration doesn't work out. And I'm sure I'm not the only preacher to have stood in the doorway shaking hands with people in the days when we could do that. To have someone come up to me, refer to an illustration that I've used, and then go off at a tangent with a story of their own that they thought matched the one I'd told. I can't though blame other people when I've done it myself. A few weeks ago the Reverend Paul Bettison was talking about the need for us to remain rooted in the foundations of our faith and he used as an illustration a story of a man who'd come to a crossroads and found that the signpost had blown over. He'd worked out how to put it back up by remembering where he'd come from because by setting it back up with that sign pointing in the right direction all the others then came right as well. Now that's a very good illustration, there's nothing wrong with it. But I began to think about the times when I've got lost up in the area around High Bradfield where the wind doesn't just blow the sign posts over it also blows all the signs round so they're all pointing in the same direction. Sometimes we can see a completely different point in an illustration from the one that the preacher intended. And again, that's something that's happened to me in the last few weeks. I've been shopping around a bit during lockdown and one place I've been following in particular has been Burniston because that's where we have our caravan and they've been doing an online service every week. And I've particularly enjoyed the sermons delivered by the Reverend David Perry, who is actually now their ex-minister. Although, as he did a lot of his recordings whilst out on the cliff tops, etc., I did wonder sometimes whether I was more interested in, in the scenery than the sermons. <laughs> but for his last sermon, he was on a walk along the cliff top, on this occasion just to the south of Scarborough, and he was stopping at various points to illustrate things in relation to the passage he was looking at. And at one point he came to a bush, a very, very misshapen bush. Not particularly unusual though on that cliff top, because that's what happens to bushes when they get hit by both the wind that comes up the side of the cliff from the sea and the wind that comes across the land. They do get shaped into fantastic uh, and very odd looking shapes. The shapes that will be worthy of the Yorkshire Sculpture Park probably. And he used this peculiar looking bush that had been shaped entirely by the wind to say that this was what the church should be like. A church that was shaped entirely by the wind of the Holy Spirit. Now at that time I absolutely got the point and when I went out for a walk later I began to think how wonderful it would be if all our churches were shaped entirely by the wind of the Holy Spirit. But then I started to see that misshapen bush not as an illustration of a spirit-filled church but as an illustration of a church that had been battered by the wind of circumstances to the point where it was perhaps no longer even recognisable as a church or at least not as the church we used to know. And that made me depressed because that picture felt a lot closer to reality than the picture that Reverend David Perry had painted when he'd been looking at the bush. And whilst COVID-19 has battered us severely in the last few months and looks sadly as if it's going to batter us for some months to come, I think we have to admit that this was going on long before COVID-19 emerged. 
and that COVID-19 is just one of the many contributory factors. My depression, though, spurred me to a realisation that we do have a choice. We can sit back and continue to take the battering, or at least for as long as we can survive. Or we can accept the challenge of exploring what we need to do to change the picture of a church that is shaped by the wind of circumstance to a picture of a church that is shaped by the wind of the Holy Spirit. And I would dare to suggest that COVID-19 could be a defining moment when we collectively say, enough is enough, let's turn ourselves around. It won't be easy or quick, and there's no guarantee of success. And when I'm thinking like this, I often remember the times when I went on mission and found myself reflecting on 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2. Now it is required of those that have been given a trust that they prove faithful. In other words, it's not about success or failure, but about doing what we are required to do and letting God determine the outcome. So what can we do individually and collectively to change the picture? I want to suggest three things for us to reflect on. First, we need to pray like we've never prayed before. The one thing that marks out every revival that has taken place in the history of the Christian church and indeed in the life of the Jewish nation before that is prayer. Second Chronicles, this is an Old Testament verse, Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And Jimmy and Carol Owens wrote a musical based on that verse back in the 1970s. So we've been being reminded about that for quite a few years now. We need to be praying as individuals and we need to be looking for ways to pray together as churches, even as lockdown continues. I have to admit a measure of guilt as I speak these words, because although I've maintained regular Bible study and even managed to read a few books, a few more books than I'd read previously, and attend some online seminars during lockdown, I haven't found praying easy. And I've ended up more than once waking up in the night realising either that I hadn't started to say any pre my prayers at all, or I'd only got round to starting to say them as I'd got into bed and fallen asleep before I'd finished. I don't quite know why, unless it's been the loss of routine, but I for one need to put my house in order. The second thing we need to do is to be willing to change. And again, I'm not sure I'm the right person to be saying that one either. I don't like change. As some of you know, I have just retired, although as a result of the chaos of the last six months in higher education, including obviously having to rewrite all the plans for the coming year, um, I haven't exactly finished yet. I'm still tidying up files and briefing people and handing jobs over. And I do find myself from time to time wishing we could just go back to the old days, that I could drive to the station, get on a train, walk up to work and go and sit in the office and be with everybody else just like we used to do. And we probably feel like that about the church. We don't want new normal. We want old normal. It is of course possible that as in my case with work, we will never be able to go back to old normal. But even if we could, that doesn't mean we should. We have to be willing to change. 
And thirdly, we need to be open to the Holy Spirit. Now, for me, that's the scariest bit of all, because I like to be in control. A few weeks ago, I was chatting to my brother about um, getting another car, although I think it'll be a while at the moment, because what's the point? I'm only doing about 10 miles a week. But he said, you really should get an automatic. They're just so lovely to drive. I told him he was being lazy. But the reality is, I'm not sure I want an automatic because it feels like I won't have the same level of control. I have driven one from time to time and I'm not very fond of them. But if we are serious about letting the Holy Spirit into our own lives and or our churches, then we have to be willing to surrender control, to let go and let God. Now, I love the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. It was a great pleasure this week to finally go and do a walk across it that I haven't done for over six months. But I must say, most of the time, I go in there for the scenery, the lovely countryside, the bird life, etc. And not really to look at the sculptures. Yes, I like some of them, but uh, others, especially the Damien Hirst, I think would be better off somewhere else. But all sculptures are shaped not by themselves, but by the humans that create them. And in the same way, our churches are shaped by forces outside of their control. However, unlike the clay, the bronze, the wood or whatever else you make the sculpture from, the church has the ability to determine what defines it. And today, as in every other age, we need to ask whether we're going to sit back and let ourselves be shaped by the winds of circumstance or enable the Holy Spirit to shape us through prayer, a willingness to change, and a letting go of our desire to be in control. Amen.